it's the info. It's the man with the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. It's the man with the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. It's the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. We got the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info, man. You can call them information. Info, man. A case thrust into the national spotlight amid racial tensions now has a decision from the Sacramento County District Attorney's Office. We will not charge these officers with any criminal liability related to the shooting death and the use of force on step on part. After nearly a year, Anne-Marie Schubert says the officers responsible for shooting and killing Stephon Clark were justified. Both officers believed that he was pointing a gun at them. Stop killing us! The outcome reigniting anger for Clark's family, who are demanding police accountability. No justice, no peace. It's simple. No justice, no peace in Sacramento. The emotions for some so overwhelming, Clark's grandmother was rushed to the hospital. And we begin with a live look outside Sacramento Police Headquarters tonight, where a once peaceful crowd of demonstrators has started to burn blue flags, we understand, pouring gasoline on them. This is all happening outside the Sacramento Police Department right now, just hours after the Sacramento County District Attorney said she will not file charges against the officers who shot and killed Stephon Clark. We're going to stay on top of those live pictures for you throughout this evening. And good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Adrienne Moore. This controversial decision comes nearly one year after Stephon Clark's death. We've been following the story all day long for you, and we begin our coverage tonight with CBS 13's Steve Large. He's anchoring our coverage from outside the Sacramento Police Department, where things have very quickly escalated. Steve. Just here at the top of the 5 o'clock hour, they started burning these Blue Lives Matter flags. And here is the scene right now. We are standing in the parking lot of the Sacramento Police Department. And a crowd of some 50 to 100 folks from Black Lives Matter have congregated here. Again, you saw those live pictures of the flags burning here. But mostly, this has been a, simply a peaceful event at this hour. A lot of uh, families here uh, and a lot of folks with their banners up and signs reading Black Lives Matter. And we must be here for one and another. We're beginning to chant a little bit right now. This is probably the most active that we've seen it in the hours since uh, the DA announced the decision not to file the charges in the Stefan Clark shooting. Want to get to a reaction from the Clark family right away here. And as soon as the DA made that announcement, Clark's mother rushed down outside the DA's office. Everybody, welcome to the Information Man Show. I really appreciate everybody being here. I want to say to everybody that's been supporting the channel, thank you, thank you 100% for your support, for watching the videos, for liking the videos, for sharing the videos, and coming over and making the chat room a great place to hang out for folks. Let me go ahead and um, for those of you that are new to the channel, go ahead and uh, hit the bell for notification. Go ahead and follow me. And uh, if you enjoy what it is that I've been doing and what I'm trying to do over here, let me also recognize Malcolm Fletch TV. I got to give that brother a great kudos. I got to give him a clap here. I definitely have to give that brother a clap for coming on board uh, to the channel because uh, we talked about ADOS. And we really got into it big time. I really appreciate that brother being on the program uh, with me the other day. And I got to give a shout out to um, uh, Prophet of Thought series, uh, Brother X. He is dynamic. He's very supportive as well. I want to thank him for being a part of that panel. I want to thank uh, Brother Super Traz. I want to thank Nicole Ali, Sister Marie. I want to thank... Um, Ken, uh, Kendra D, who came on board for us. We've got um, my man uh, 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 Cap, PY2 Cap came on. We had Brother Art that was on the panel. 
uh, AM1 came on at some point in time. And of course we had uh, B Miles 84 of the Conscious Channel who came on board and contribute to the discussion um, as we were going through the discussion about EADOS, um, reparations, uh, doing for self, uh, all these things, all these areas are very important. So if I forgot anybody that was on that panel, no disrespect to you. I appreciate you uh, for coming on board. And I want to appreciate everybody that was watching. And I hope that you share that video. What I want to do right now, uh, as you know, this news has broke that uh, Stephen, Stephon Clark, uh, the young man who was killed by the police in Sacramento, California, uh, not uh, some year, about a year ago now, um, is not going to get justice whatsoever. It's pretty obvious right now uh, that the police have gotten off. Once again, the police have killed a black person and they have gotten off for murdering us, for killing us. Uh, this is unfortunate because this is something that I, I've been saying and other people have been saying is going to continue happening because there's just no respect for black lives. Tell the truth. And this is just, uh, this is just the facts. Um, Say what you will about the brother's character. I know that there was a lot of controversy around his social media, his tweets, uh, his mother of his uh, of his children, uh, the things that she said. There were some disparaging things as it relates to black women. And uh, say what you will about what he said. That's an you know um, that's he has his issues. Of course, you saw his brother who was in a lot of pain who was going through a lot of, I believe, from my professional opinion, working in mental health, was going through trauma, which is why he was behaving the way he was behaving in media. And, of course, his family, you know, that came on. So there were people who didn't agree with the antics or the behavior of the family. But, hey, what would you do? How would you act if it was your family member that was killed in a way that he was killed? So despite what you would say would be the deficits or... The, the social prob problematic behavior uh, of one Stephen Clark as it relates to domestic disputes with his mother of his children. I understand through my connections to the area in Sacramento as to why uh, he ended up living with his grandmother. Uh, Stephen Clark had many run-ins with uh, the legal system. I think he's been in and out of juvenile um, I know someone who worked with him in a juvenile detention center. Uh, he had he had some he had various problems, okay. And one of the reasons why he was living, from what I understand, with his uh, grandmother, is because there was a restraining order put placed on him by the mother of his children. Apparently, there had been some uh, domestic disputes. Uh, the brother may have been putting his hands on her, and I think as a result that caused him not to be happy. He could not be around her. And the family was not very fond of him, which is why when this happened to him, you didn't really see a lot of that side of the family really coming out, speaking out. You you had the the uh, the mother of his children speaking out here and there, but there was some problems. Uh, the brother was not perfect whatsoever. He had some issues. He had some some issues as you know. There some people would say it's self hate the way he went about talking about black women. There was some self-hate there. I know a lot of ladies really went in on him on YouTube and a lot of folks went in on him on YouTube. But um, I'm here to basically say, not to be an apologist for his behavior, but to say that although he did have some deficits in his behavior, as we, as we noticed on social media, it does not change the fact that this is another example of a black male who was shot unarmed by the police. And by all accounts, I think the autopsy report, I believe, showed that he was running from the police officers. They shot him in the back. And if you shot or shot in the back by the police, uh, as Walter Scott was shot in the back by police in South Carolina, and we know what happened in that case, uh, how can you be a threat to police officers? And how can a police officer say that they are feeling threatened by someone who's running away from them? And as you can see, he was shot in the backyard of his grandmother's home. And you remember the uh, articles, the news articles and the news reports. She stated in interviews and in audio interviews that she was not allowed to see her son, that his body laid there for hours upon hours. 
before they would let the family come out and see the, the body. Okay? And the grandmother was very upset about that because she was watching from her window as her grandson lays dead. And the so-called gun that the police said that he had on him was a cell phone. Now, you've got the district attorney of Sacramento in the clip that you just saw saying that the police did their job and that there will be no charges brought before them. And you've got protesting. Uh, people are very upset in the Sacramento area, as you can see in the footage as well. They're burning the blue police flag, which is the American flag painted in blue, which is a symbol of all of blue lives matter, as if blue lives have never mattered. But we know that black lives have never mattered because constantly when we are killed by police, we are killed. No respect is given to us. And we can't get justice in an unjust society, in an unjust world. That's a fact that, uh, that this is just a reality that we deal with as a people. And so I'm not surprised. I never thought that the family was going to get justice just because of the absence fear that we live in today when black men are killed by police officers when this when this happens. It's a shame. OK, um, let me go ahead and and say too, uh, furthermore in this issue is that f f furthermore is that I've said in an earlier video going way back since I started doing content on YouTube that um, hate groups, skinhead, these white supremacist type groups, uh, militia type groups, the alt-right, these type of groups, uh, they have infiltrated themselves into the institutions of our society or have always been in the institutions of our society. They've infiltrated the police force, the military, politics, education. They're in all um, activities of life, as Nilly Fuller Jr. would say. You know, education, religion. It's they're, they're in everything. And so I remember back in the early 80s, you would have groups like, they would call themselves skinheads. They would wear the combat boots, leather jackets, and jeans, and they would go around stumping people and attacking uh, black people. But what they have done, if you remember that movie, Higher Edu Higher Learning, uh, directed by John Singleton, you had Ice Cube in there, and you had the, um, I think Rappinport was his name, the white boy, he played a skin, he became a skinhead in there, and he wanted to drop out of school. And the leader of the of their little gang said, no, don't you drop out of school, you're, you're stupid. We need soldiers like you in school, getting education so that we can infiltrate these institutions. And that's really what you have. I believe that uh, black men across this country have been shot by police, whether driving a bicycle, driving away from the police, they get shot. Okay. Uh, black men get shot if they're going into their uh, glove compartment or their pants to pull out their wallet. And they'll even say, hey, police officer, I'm going to get my wallet. Police officer, I have a, cons I have a, a license to carry a weapon. I have it in the car. And when individuals like this, in a state where you can have a open carry, right? And you tell the officer what you're about to do and they still shoot you, okay? Because they say that they're threatened. Or they'll use the tricks of the book by saying that you were putting your hands in your waist area. That's a, that's a code, that's a little trick that the police play when they wanna make it look like you got a weapon because you put your hands uh, in the waist area of your body. So, a lot of times uh, cops get off for these, these kind of behaviors. And when these kind of groups uh, join the police departments, it gives them a license now, a legal license to oppress and pick with black males in particular. And now they can do it legally without going to jail nine, 10 times or all the time because they can now shoot you. They can now stop you, harass you, plant drugs on you. Uh, do all sorts of inappropriate behavior towards you. When you look at Ferguson, remember in the Ferguson incident, they found out that uh, most of the black people, most black people in Ferguson, Missouri, were had high numbers of traffic stops and tickets because the police were making it their business to harass black people in the community in Ferguson. And as we remember, Mark uh, Mike Brown, uh, the whole thing about hands up, don't shoot. He got shot uh, by a police officer. And I don't care if he was opposably shot, if he was opposably 
uh, uh, robbed a convenience store for some cigarettes. I don't care. Nobody should be dying over cigarettes. And so nobody should be dying over pulling out a cell phone and running away from the police officers. Um, and if he committed a crime, um, the family was never given any information about what his crime was. Now, there was rumors that he had been busting windows. And so I'm just going to say in this, in this short video that this, this Stephen Clark situation in Sacramento is just one of many examples in which uh, black males in particular do not get the justice that we deserve in this society. We do not get treated equally. And it seems like police are continuing and continuing to get off for shooting. And a lot of times these police will get off, will be put in suspension or will be given leave from their duties with pay. Some of them just get moved to the background somewhere. Uh, and if you notice, uh, here in Sacramento, uh, they kept trying to tell everyone to be calm. And what usually happens in these situations, you'll have some preacher, some member of the black community who will come out and tell black people to be calm, relax, let the justice system work its way, you know, God is going to give you justice. You're going to get justice. And what we have is nothing but just us looking from the inside, outside, in. And we continue to get no justice in this system. Tell the truth. And so this is why you have to be honest with yourself and say people have every right to protest, civil, you know, be angry. Because how are we going to continue to keep people calm in these situations and say, let the system work itself out? When the system itself has shown to be a failure, and I'm going to tell you why, in my humble feelings and opinion, why the system is a failure. The system is a failure because the United States government and the systems that are in place were never originally set up to benefit black males and black people. Because this country was originally founded with white men in mind to be in control and in power. They simply brought us over with the means of saying to themselves, these people will be our slaves. And that is what their whole ideology, their intent was. And so that's why the justice system or the injustice system does not work for us in many cases. We do not find ourselves getting justice. We do not find ourselves in situations um, where equity, equality matters. Now, say what you will about the Black Lives Matter movement. We know that it's being engineered socially by George Soror and many people who have put money in it, uh, that white liberal money has been a part of it and narratives of it is being changed as I speak. But at the end of the day, black people who say that Black Lives Matter is because we tend to be the ones uh, being shot by cops unarmed um, being choked out in the case of Eric Garner and New York and we don't get any justice in the case of uh, Trayvon Martin when you had uh, George Zinnemann who was not even a police officer but thought he was but said he was a night watchman and it was pretty apparent that he had a relationship with the police department down there in Stanford Florida I believe they said his father was a judge. So he had some sort of relationship or connection to that police department, which is why they treated him with kid gloves. And this is why we always say that we don't have any friends and other groups don't come uh, to our defense. Uh, what I would say uh, in mask order, you may have a few people that of different races that will come to protests and rallies here and there, like a sprinkle of salt and pepper, right? But for the most part, when black people find ourselves in these situations, um, we don't have a lot of friends, a lot of people really backing our move. Uh, we have to be on our square or backing our own uh, situations because other people are worried about their situations. They're not worried about ours. So we have to keep that in mind. This is why ADOS is important because ADOS unifies us as a people under one uh, philosophy and ideology without there being any let's trickle it down to everybody else no no no. this is what you have to do for us so I suspect that this will continue to, to occur and we do need to uh, be more politically involved they say that all government is local 
It all starts in your local area, who's on your board, who's controlling your schools, who's your mayor, who's your city uh, supervisors, all these things. Uh, I know there's some people out there who don't believe in politics, that politics won't work. But we do know one thing, that if we come together or we utilize our political will, our ability to come together and galvanize like we do on social media, we can bring gravity to issues. And I do think that there is some power in your vote when you vote in a block. So I think if we can vote in a block to push our issues and to manipulate these politicians, because politicians, we don't work for politicians, politicians work for us. And I've said this before, in politics, there's no permanent interest. There's no, there's no, no, let me say this again. In politics, there's no permanent enemies. There's no permanent friends. That's right. There's only permanent interest. And interest is changed based on political moves that we make. Someone like uh, many of our people that are being shot by cops, you have to look at who controls the police departments. Who's the mayor? Because mayors have a direct control to their police department. Who controls the police department? Who controls the leadership? Okay? Another thing, as I said before, um, they need to change the rules and how they evaluate people who join the police department. They should be psychologically evaluated because you've got people in the police departments who don't belong in police departments working as policemen or police women. They don't have they don't have these, the uh, the mindset. You've got many people that are in the military who come out of the military and join the police department and they're bringing those military ideologies with them. You've got people that associate with hate groups who in, that were Ku Klux Klan types who infiltrate themselves into these police departments and then they have a badge to harass us legally. That's a problem. So I just wanted to bring, this is a short video. I want to appreciate everybody that's been supporting the channel. Tell the truth. We got to keep telling the truth. But um, like I said, uh, you know, he had, Stephen, he had some problems. But um, what's happening in Sacramento, uh, what ha has happened is a damn shame. Uh, 21st century, we can't even get uh, court justice. And, and, and what I don't understand for the life of me, and maybe I do understand, is how police officers can continue killing unarmed black men and they can justify it and get away with it. Well, I, I just answered my own question already. They're able to do it because the system was never set up for us, by us, for, for us in mind. And that's why we don't uh, get off. I've even seen footage and videos where you've had white men get in the faces of police officers and they never get shot. Uh, black men, we tend to always be the ones getting shot. Um, I think, what was that? It was that brother in New York who was going into his home uh, the police shot him like Swiss cheese 40 times, I believe. He was pulling out his wallet. They claim it was a gun. And that that brother, I think he was an African immigrant. He came over to New York, shot dead, mistreated, because they thought he had a gun. 40 shots to kill one man. Go figure, that's just crazy. But this is what's going on. Uh, we got to keep this in mind. These people, these hate groups, they live somewhere. They're doing a job. Um, and they are in, they're in the police department. And I think that is one of the reasons, amongst the many, why we uh, get the injustice that we get in this country and how things are stacked against us in that sense. So um, there's going to be many, many more cases. Uh, I know everyone has been looking at the Michael Jackson situation. Let me get a little bit of that real quick. Tell the truth. Uh, I think um, Michael Jackson, bottom line, Michael Jackson's not alive to be able to uh, argue whatever uh, character assassination that they're bringing upon him. I do have to agree that no man should be sleeping in the bed with children. I do have to admit that the family members who claim that Michael touched their kids, those kids have grown up as grown adults and they have now come out, some of them, and said that Michael never touched them, that their parents put them up to that. You know, because a lot of these parents were on the gravy train 
with Michael. And the rumor has it that Michael wanted to cut some of these folks off. So they start making up these stories. Two, let me uh, just say this, that Michael, who stands to win if Michael Jackson is not alive in the music industry anymore? The industry or Michael? Believe it or not, Michael, they can make money off of, off, off of his unrecorded music or unpublished music that he has, okay? Michael owned the music business. Uh, he had the Beatles catalog, as you know. He owned many catalogs. He controlled it. And I think there's powers that be that wanted him out, okay? And then you have Oprah, Oprah, <laughs> who does the interview which I, in this series talking about Michael Jackson. I think uh, Oprah Winfrey should be ashamed of herself for associating herself uh, in this way. And not to mention that she's been around um, people who we know now have been accused of uh, pedophile behavior. So that's something that we have to have to recognize. Excuse me. So the Michael Jackson situation, I don't want to go too deep into it. I know you all, we all know what the allegations are or were against him. But um, it just seems like in American society today that black men at all time high, our characters are being attacked uh, we're getting, we're being impacted by the Me Too movement, and you've got a lot of uh, white men and other groups of men who are doing a whole bunch of things, and you don't, you don't see them being used as the example, okay? But I think there's a lot going on that needs to be addressed. I want to thank everybody for listening to the program. Um, like I said, whatever you think about Stephen Clark and, the whole, and his behavior on social media when he was alive. It's, it's, it's definitely something to examine. It does make you question this individual, but does not change the fact that, as you know right now, it's been reported the police in Sacramento are, are walking away scot-free for killing a young man. They get to go home to their families. They get to enjoy their time off from work. They get to enjoy the holiday seasons that will be coming up and um, sometime down the line. But he won't, okay? Because he's dead um, and they claimed that he had a gun and he had a freaking cell phone and also if I'm not mistaken during that uh, whole situation the police the Sacramento police did not have their uh, audio or their cams on for, for some time for some reason they turned it down when they discovered that they killed him so I find that interesting once again police always covering themselves, trying to cover up their lies and cover up their treachery. So let's just keep that in mind, um, despite what you may think about this, in this uh, brother, keep in mind um, what it still represents. Is this another uh, black man killed by the police? They get off, they get away with it. And this could happen to your family member. It could happen to you, your children. This is the climate that we're living under in American society. Um, Obama was in office, him and Eric Holder didn't do anything really tangible about what was happening to black men being killed. Uh, I don't expect Trump to do anything tangible uh, at all. And so we just got to keep that in mind. I want to thank everybody for listening to the program again. This is Information Man with this news. And I'll see everybody uh, again. Just wanted to do this short video. Thank you and peace to you. Tell the truth. The info. It's the man with the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. It's the man with the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. It's the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. We got the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info, man. You can call them information. Info, man.